Our next speaker for the evening will be Dr. Jose Bermudez. Dr. Bermudez is currently working on forest biomass mapping for Canada's forested ecosystems. He describes himself as driven by his curiosity to improve himself, gain knowledge, explore, seek novelty, and to just be happy. Tonight, he will discuss the increasing global temperatures and the resulting increase in insect infestation. Looking at this insect infestation, we know that it impacts our forested ecosystems. You will learn how remote sensing technology can now provide important data for potential early detection that can allow us to monitor growing pest populations. Please welcome Dr. Jose Bermudez. Uh, well, today I'm going to talk about the impact of climate change and, and the foliation causing by insects. So this is a topic that most mm, people doesn't know. <clears throat> so most people go when asked about climate change and its consequences, normally they think about the intense rocks, water scarcity, severe fires, rising sea levels, flooding, melting polar ice, and some other catastrophic consequences. However, another equally important consequence is the increase on defoliation of causes by insects. So in this image, we have uh, um, an example of how insects uh, is the, the leaf. Um, formally, defoliation is defined as the relative amount of missing needles or leaves in the central crowd as compared to a reference tree. So, what is the consequence of, the consequence of insect defoliation? Because in the worst cases, uh, some insects can kill trees across a large landscape during outbreaks. And also, could compromise food security. The insect is, is outbreaks. If the, the leaf of the, the agricultural crop, there's going to be a very worse consequence about it because we don't have food. This is a very complicated situation. So why does climate change affect insects defoliation? Well, uh, there is a direct correlation between the temperature and the, and the amount of insects. So as the, the temperature increases, the abundance of uh, the insects also increase. And this is because the insects are called blood, blooded, and that means that their metabolism and their activity is very regularly influenced by the temperature on their bodies. And the temperature of bodies is almost entirely dependent on what the surrounding on the environment is. So we can summarize this as a low temperature in activity and higher temperature usually stimulates the animals. So one of the concepts of increasing the temperature is that the number of generation also increase because we are at the activities of the insect also increase. Uh, there, are, there are an expansion of the geographic range because some areas are not accessible for, for the insect. Uh, could be outbreak increasing the disease transmitted by, by the insect because we are more uh, transmitters, more vectors that transmit the, the, the diseases. Uh, also increase on the, in the increase on the weathering survival. So that's because the reduction of the of the cold season, then we're gonna have more more insects and some other reason. Okay. So why is it related to the climate change? The climate change you said it refers to the long term shift in temperatures and weather pattern. So uh, this. A uh, change on the on the temperature can be caused by uh, variation on the solar cycle that be natural, uh, uh, or may be caused by human, primarily due to the burning of fossil. So that's some projection in the increase in the temperature for the, in the next century. So it's estimated or uh, uh, increasing the temperature in the climate change indicate that in the last uh, scenario we are going to have increase at five. Celsius degrees in the, the next century, and in the lower scenario, if we reduce the consumption of the fossil burning, then it's going to reduce the temperature. So it's important to, uh, in the next generation, to look for alternatives in order to reduce the increase in the temperature, uh, burning less uh, fossils. So what happened in defoliation in Canada? So it's expected that uh, in defoliation in Canada uh, will be double or triple in the next uh, 50 years. Here we have an example of the, on what rate that happened in the, in the region of British Columbia in 1999, caused by the explosive insects that 
uh, they were expanded for duration and then attack the trees that were located in these in these regions. So also by increasing the human traffic, maybe lead the position of ads and some host plants flourish in other areas. And the, the human activity also going to contribute in increasing uh, this, mm, this mm, the increase the, the the region action the action that going the insect going to have. Okay. So solution uh, in this case early detection and monitoring. Uh, infectation is, is crucial. We need to do that in order to design policies to control the potential spread of insects over the next few years. And also, in basing these policies, reduce the magnitude of the damage that could, this uh, could, that insect could produce. So, but what happened? How we can monitoring left area for decision making? Here we have an example of a big area. So it's more, it's almost impossible to access to the region and then collect information about the duration was affected or not by insects. So manual inspection is demanding and time consuming. Uh, it's difficult to access to some dense regions and then cover left areas is infeasible. In this scenario, uh, we have uh, the remote sensing emerge that's a cost effective tools. That uh, with, with this technology we can cover less areas. Uh, now we have free available image with the highest possible temporal resolution. That means that we can observe it very in detail in the space uh, the information that is on the air and also with the higher frequency in time. And these sensors are capable of capturing level in prevalent information. So, but this remote sensing, remote sensing is formally defined. Uh, the science of art obtaining information about an object, uh, area, or phenomenon through the analysis of data acquired at, by a device without no contact. So uh, we have different uh, sensors that we now satellites, the new car has also sensors that they capture the environment without any contact. Like the a camera, a cell phone is also a remote sensing device. So based in, in, in this sensor, we performed some uh, preliminary studies of insect defoliation in the region of Ontario. And this we using some uh, data for a particular satellite, the MODIS data collection. It's an optical image. Based on this information, we extract some features that are related to the uh, spectral information and thermal uh, data. And Using data from uh, that were collected manually from the province of Ontario, we train uh, in machine learning models, and then we can do this analysis and make some uh, predictions uh, around different places in in all Ontario. So the preliminary result that we have, we have uh, this map that where the blue colors indicate low probability of uh, presenting uh, insect defoliation, and the red color indicates high probability of having insects. So we perform this analysis during the during three years, but we need to increase this, extend this, our study for, for more years in order to consider more variables. So one of the next steps is to extend our analysis for one decade. Uh, perform field validation of our normal monitoring region in order to verify that our model is predicted, uh, have, have high accuracy in these predictions, and also incorporate some measure or uncertainty uh, in the machine learning models. So this is our, our team that we are working in this project for the uh, Gosamo Remote Sensing Lab. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Bermudez. This topic actually really hit home for me. I know that I've seen some of those insect infested leaves in my garden. So um, looking at a question from our audience, it's one I've actually had before as well. Uh, in Canada, we are seeing an increase in many insect populations, including ticks, Japanese beetles, and tent caterpillars. Is it possible to use remote sensing technology to inform things like pesticide use or prevention? Well, and in the case of remote sensing technologies, we can have some information about the presence or not presence of these insects, depending on the, the, the sensor that we are using on and the, the data that is provided, because we need some uh, reference data 
in order to train the, the models to, ident to identify that uh, the insect. So in this case, it's, it's possible to, to do that, uh, depending on the technology that we are going to use to, to perform this analysis. Very good. Thank you so much, Dr. Bermudez. Thank you.